Is it hard to access affordable, healthy food? Then listen carefully. Daryl Addison, an African-American inventor, has patented a process for growing food on demand. He called it Torpedo Pot. Torpedo Pot is a fully automated flower pot that gives you control over your plant's environment. All you do is add soil, seeds, and plants to the flower pot and watch it grow. Yes, Torpedo Pot grows the rest. Visit www.torpedopot.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're here. We're here today. Um, it is Thursday. Um, the shoot, I guess the last Thursday of the month. And let me share this while y'all come on in the room here a little bit. Put my mouse over there. You know, give y'all hand clap. You know, hope hope y'all hope y'all been going good. I know some of y'all kids will probably be off tomorrow for Good Friday. I know, you know, my kids are, so the kids will be home. And they're going to be off Monday, too. So shout out to the kids. Let me get this shared out. Make sure you share this live with your friends and family. Let them know we're alive. You know, we're going to have our conversations and our, ser and, and our, and our daily sermon. Now, make sure I get everything back up here where I need it to be. Boom. All right. I can see y'all. Good evening. Good evening to everybody. As y'all come into the room, tomorrow's live stream. You no, know, we do a live stream Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. But tomorrow's live stream will not be on the YouTube platform. Tomorrow's live stream will be on the app. Now, every live stream we're doing, we we do it on the app as well. So is I do it on the app and I also do it here on YouTube. But I said, and I thought talked about this Wednesday, that I just wanted to see if I got the thumbnails back in time, which I did. So tomorrow, Friday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, on the app, we're gonna do the live stream about the lawsuit with Puffy. Um, and the reason why I want to do it on the, on the app is because I don't want to have to censor words. I don't want to have to, Ooh, let me not sure not to say that, you know, I don't want to do it. Sometimes, you know, sometimes that gets annoying. I'll be honest. It gets really annoying. You can't say this. You can't say that. Well, let me say it this way. You got to insinuate certain things. You can't fully just say things. It's not like we want to just wild out or something. No, we just want to talk about the story and what, what Puffy is a part of, and going even me reading the lawsuit, because I've read it, I mean, it's just, and then you read it, and then you look at what happened with the raids, everything matches the doggone lawsuit, what the Homeland Security is doing, literally. And it's so many people that's about to get jammed up with this stuff, it's crazy. But I want to just take my time and go through the lawsuit, you know, uh, uh, with y'all and just give my take on it. And I'll let y'all decide if you, because I can't believe at this point why people are defending P. Diddy. I just can't believe that. Because um, we know him for years P. Diddy has had his hand implicated in so much, especially with the ruining of the career of young brothers and sisters that wanted to try to get out of the hood and try to make it in the music business. You know, all the bodies that's been surrounding this man for years, people mysteriously losing their life, and all kinds of things has happened with this man. He haven't had really one artist. I, I, I say maybe later Mace did something with himself, but most all of them went to obscurity. Uh, they were never the same after dealing with him, a lot of them. Um, you know, I think I seen the other day E. Ness, shout out to him, looked like he was doing pretty good from, you know, making the band, the original making the band. Um, you know, some of them are doing okay, but you know, the internet is a saving grace for a lot of people because back in the time of the gatekeepers and back in the time when you couldn't get your story out unless you went through the, the major platforms, that was a horrible time to live in beyond with you because if the, if the mainstream media didn't want to tell your story because these people like P Diddy and the people above P Diddy that's, that's part of his mess, uh, pay off these, these media organizations, you'll never get your story out. But now you can put out your own story. You don't got to go to nobody's platform. And if it's a good enough story, boom. And then really a lot of this stuff that people thought about him 
for years. Maybe it's say, oh, man, it's a rumor or whatever. But, you know, we'll, we'll go through the lawsuit on the live stream. So make sure you join us tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time uh, on the app. If you're not part of the app, um, it's easy to get. Just download it. Google Play, Apple App Store. Once you get there, you have to create you a membership. Just go to the sign in tab and it'll tell you, or, or the, and they'll say, or create membership, create your membership. Go through whatever one you want to pick. And then we'll be live streaming there tomorrow night. Um, it's just that simple. Because like I said, I don't want to censor it. I don't want to say, ooh, I don't want to talk about this part of the lawsuit because they're not going to like that. No, we want to show it all. So that's the point of having the app. And that's why I'm glad y'all. Uh, are, are, are starting more and more to come and support us on the app. That way we can do more content, but we can discuss things that's going on in our community without having to say, I can't say that. You know, I can't engage in that. So that's part of that. All right. Yeah. I saw the Al B. Sure situation. I sure did. And maybe we can talk about that tomorrow um, as well. But before we get started, and I know y'all slowly coming to get Gene Deal. Oh, yeah. he been telling on Puffy. For a hot minute. And everything Big Gene said is coming to pass. Well, before we get started, let's go to our daily devotional. Now, you know our daily devotional is 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 uh uh our uh super mayor. So here we go. Y'all forget I am the leader. They want to hear from the mayor. If y'all ain't learned that yet, the mayor, not the trustees that don't do nothing, that only run their mouth. Y'all don't do no work, no work. Mm. What, what is that? No comment. Y'all should be ashamed of y'all stuff. Y'all black. Y'all are black. And y'all sitting up here beating and attacking on a black woman that's in power. Y'all should be ashamed of yourself. So this is what it's all about, guys. They don't want a black person in power. They don't want a woman in power. You don't even, if you ain't seen that yet. And someone's so young. Everybody gotta understand, God give you what you can handle. That's what God gives you. He ain't gonna give you more than that. As long as you can stay, stay the course, fight the fight, and keep going, that's what we're gonna do here at Thornton Township. And we've been doing a doggone good job. All right, shout out to the super mayor for the daily daily devotional. Um letting spread her wisdom about y'all don't do no work in the black community. Um, and how y'all don't respect the black woman in power. Um, that that's the message of the daily devotional respect black women in power and start doing the work from, from, uh, super mayor, Tiffany Henyard. All right. Yeah. City girl, mayor, city girl, mayor. That's what she is. So as you see the title, the eye bucking, the showing all the 32 teeth and giving them folks privilege will always second us. Now, I saw a video on, on, on the internet streets. And as you know, always we will, you know, show our text like scripture here, which is a video. And then we will preach our sermon right after that. So let's cue up why this particular sister said she could not move to the African continent, why she couldn't do it. So let's go ahead and cue that up. Let's cue it up. Does anti-blackness better than a black immigrant or like a black person from the... I get so many questions from people who look like me asking me why I wouldn't take my children to Africa and why I moved them to Europe. When I travel to Africa and I am in the airport and um, the airport attendant tells me to step aside so that the Indians and the Europeans can walk through, there is a level of self-hatred still to this day in Africa. And you guys are gonna get so pissed off at me and I don't care because I am of African descent, I can say what I want to say. But when you tell me to step aside so that the Europeans and the Indians, our bank accounts look alike, but you wanna tell me to step aside in the homeland, in the homeland of my ancestors, but you, I should step aside so they can, because they can, they need to get through. There is no day on this earth that I will walk this earth and worship a colonizer. The brown, the original brown 
and native people all over this world, I salute you. There are so many injustices in Africa, so many corrupt mindsets, so many, we have to fix it. There, there was no way that I would ever move my children to a country in Africa. Now I'm talking about a specific country, but I've actually, I've experienced this in four countries in Africa now, four. There is no way that I would ever move my children to Africa and have them experience an establishment owner telling me to remove the fan from my side because the American, the, the, which again, I'm not, I have not spoken. So you don't even know where I'm from, but the American, the white Americans on the other side, they need the fan. There's no way. There's no way. And again, I am spending time in Dubai as well. I've never had anything like that happen. And I could talk about this all night long. I could talk about it because I married into a Nigerian family as well, who they're very colorist. Um, I remember my mother-in-law telling me that my sister-in-law was having a baby and that she hoped she was praying like every day, doing something so that their baby is light skinned. Meanwhile, I have brown children. I myself am brown. So how do you, what do you, where do you think I should place that? Like, I just, I just never imagined the level of ignorance, the level of self-hatred that some African people have. I could, I, I was raised in a pro pan African household. Like you are beautiful, baby. I don't care if your edges or roots or not. Enjoy the whatever. You are beautiful. That is how I was raised. Africa has a long way to go. A very long way to go. And the African mindset has to evolve before I could ever immerse my children into any kind of nonsense like that. The level of colorism, tribalism. I can't even tell you how many experiences I have had with tribalism. No. The worst, and it's disrespectful, and it's disgusting. It's, it's I could, I just, I get disgusted thinking about it. So no, I would not immerse my kids in Africa. They will go. They know exactly where they're from. They know exactly we we travel there often. You know. But to fully immerse them, I need them to go where they know that they are the beauty standard. And unfortunately, no matter what these propaganda and these campaigns and oh, travel, return home, home of the return, it's not, it's not what you, it is propaganda. It is a campaign. I, I worked in marketing. It is a campaign. All right. All right. So let's, let's get to what what she is saying um i take two sides on this one i take two 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 one side i'm gonna take is i'm gonna talk about certain things she says that is a a, a reality and then i have another take that I, I i would say about europe right but let me let me let me go on the guys of reality. I think she said that, um, when she experienced the fan thing, I think she was in South Africa and I think probably more so Cape town, uh, where she kind of experienced that. And if like I say that happened exactly how she said it, see, this is what I do. And I don't know why y'all don't do this. Let me make sure I write some things down. Uh, here on my little list here. That way I can, I know my points. When I travel abroad, I quickly speak to people. Why do I do that? I quickly speak to people so they know I'm an American. That's a strategy for me. I don't want to get people twisted on who I am. I want every bit of my American privilege I can get. Yes, we have an American privilege. Even black people, we have an American privilege. If she didn't make it a point to talk to people and to stay quiet, they probably assume you was, you was from there. Nine out of 10, they will assume you from there. If you don't say a word, 
Don't say much. Just stay quiet. They'll come up to you speaking the, their language. It's like, you be like, oh, oh, <laughs> I don't understand what you're talking about. What you get? Oh, oh, oh I, I, I didn't know. That's happened to me before, right? Um, now, the one place that say Ethiopia, you everybody know you're not from there, right? But you go to a place like Kenya, South Africa, anywhere in West Africa, anywhere where people that look like us, right? People will know. They don't know until you open your mouth. Child say open your mouth. But yes, you have some Jesse Lee Petersons on the continent. You better believe that. Oh, yes, you better believe it. They are there. They will buck their eyes. Now, the eye bucking for us and how we look at it is, man, that's really like, that's sad, bro. How you in a freaking African continent bucking your eyes? Y'all the majority over here. I'm looking at the pictures of all your leaders and they all uh, of, of African descent. They all black, they all whatever. And you bucking your ass to these people coming through the airport. Like, didn't you not remember what these people done to you? Like, you don't remember the colonization. You don't remember that. You don't remember. You don't see how even today these people are still stealing your resources from you on pennies on a dollar. And yet you still bucking your eyes. Their, their theft have their countries way better to the point that you want to in Nigeria be a Joppa, right? basically a fleer, you want to be a jopper and leave Nigeria to go to the same places where the people is taking the resources out of Nigeria. And you not mad about that? When these people show up, you're showing all your teeth, you're smiling. Let me help you with that, sir. Like, what? The way we feel about it personally, but see, it, it's, it's like our mindset is so different. Because we've been in the trenches with the folks for hundreds of years. So when we come into something and we see that, it's like, man, what are y'all doing? You know what I'm saying? I'm saying? It's like no matter what these people do, you're bucking your eyes. Not all. Please don't believe all, because it's not all. Because trust me, it was all I would have told you. But I don't even like to see it if it's a couple or one, two. I don't want to see it. Anyone that's non African. I've seen the buck, they buck their eyes for, I've seen them buck their eyes for the Indians. Like that woman said, bucking the eyes for the, for the Chinese, the different Asian groups, bucking the eyes for the Arabs, the Arabs, they come over there doing whatever they want to do. But yet how many stories have Juan Gale? Cause I remember Juan Gale, Juan Gale covered here of women from Kenya going to Saudi Arabia and they literally got them in de facto slavery. They take their passport away from them. They, 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 they putting their hands on them, violating them. They got their kids doing things to them and they begging the Kenyan government to get them out of there to send them back home. Them same Arabs that's coming over there to the continent. And when they come, Oh, I'm so glad they here smiling and listen, like, well, we welcoming. You shouldn't welcome everybody. That's how you got colonized by welcoming everybody. You can't welcome everybody. Look at the United States. They don't welcome everybody. Didn't we cover not too long ago in Namibia, the one sister went to the embassy, paid her money, and they still denied her? It means they don't welcome everybody. That's what that means. And it's actually smart not to welcome everybody, but it's like this. You say, Phil, in a perfect world, how would you handle it? Um, Anybody had a history of colonization? I, I'm, I'm like watching you times a thousand because I know your mindset haven't changed. And I'm looking at how you treating other people of African descent in the, in your home countries. So yeah, I'm going, I'm going to, I will probably put laws on the books to favor people of African descent and everybody else, you know, like this be me. Hey, if you have African descent, you know, as long as you're not a, a, any kind of troublemaker or you don't have no warrants on Interpol or anything bad like that going on, then, Hey man, you can come visa free. You, you can stay, you know, if you come establish a business here, hire the locals, you know, man, I, I, I give you, I give you a, a permanent residency, you know, 
and, 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 and a couple of, maybe like maybe in the year or two, you keep hiring more locals, man, I give you a free citizenship. You can have citizenship over here. I just want to fast track you because the one thing that they need in the African continent is jobs. So if you're coming over here and you're helping to provide jobs for the people, then yeah, you can have a citizenship, no problem. Long as you're keeping those people gainfully employed and, 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 and you following our laws and not doing nothing illegal, nothing like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could have a citizenship. You sure can. But when it comes to the folks, oh no, you got to have a visa to come in here. And we may not accept you due to the history of colonization. We may not accept you because you can put a law, a, a, a year, a law of return for our, our people of African descent on your constitution. If you want to, and to say, no, it's the law. If you have African descent, you could come everybody else. You got to get a visa and that you have African descent. That's not discrimination at that point. That's just a law. Well, yeah, it's discrimination. What if the United States said that they only want people of European descent? Wouldn't care what the United States do. First of all, this so-called country wasn't even established by Europeans. So there you go. It was established by black Americans. It was built and founded by black Americans and innovated by black Americans. If people on the African continent can't go there, where could they go? Right? Giving these people privilege. You go back to that story, uh, 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 the brother, uh, I forgot his name, Raymond or whatever in Ghana. I'm pretty sure you heard that story with a brother and he wanted me to get in with him on this to, to buy these houses and stuff like that in Ghana. But I'm like, man, I don't really do real estate with people because real estate is the funding. I don't want my name attached to nothing if it goes bad. Cause it's one thing to work, to, to partner with a company and do a trip. It's another thing to partner with somebody about some real estate. That's a whole different ball game. I don't want nothing to do with anything like that with real estate. Now, if I get involved with you personally, that's different, but no, not, not through my audience. Cause anything can go wrong. And the brother said how they treated him over there. And, and, and the Ghanaian person said, well, maybe you want to get a white or Asian or Arab business partner. So, so they, they'll treat you different. Just that statement alone that a Ghanaian has to say that in his own country to another brother to say, so, so the police and them, uh, uh, everybody will kind of leave you alone a little bit, get the, get them folks. Listen, so it's enough. We gotta, we gotta do certain things here in America, right? Cause that's where the brother come from. The brother was, came from New York, even though I know his people originally from Gu Guyana, but he was born here. He, he was born and raised in New York and we know how things get down in America. So now you go over there to Ghana and you got, and you do have to do the same thing. I gotta go get, I gotta go get some representative of a different community. And, and how use how much of that usually work out for us in the end? Go and get these other representatives of different communities. A lot of our athletes and all that are always getting representatives of a different community. And, and a lot of times our athletes and rappers and all kinds of people like that, a lot of times don't get anything out of the deal, but their representatives got something, but the representatives wasn't even part of the community. Now I understand sometimes you may not, you know, have everybody you need in the community, but doggone it cannot build a team of the community, but yet I don't let that person have a certain amount of control and you underneath the control of my team and maybe we use it, we, we're contracting you to something because that's, that's how I feel about it. Sure. I've had people come to me in the past. Hey, I can help you do this. Hey, I, I would like to maybe come in and manage like, no, 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 no. It says African diaspora. Okay. Maybe I can find somebody within the African diaspora to help me do this. Just maybe. And if I can't find something in the, somebody in the African diaspora to help me do this, then I in turn will look outside of the African diaspora. And then I will look to, to others. Usually, uh, I guess you would call them non non white, but non black people, the people in the middle, right? I'll see what they're offering. Right. Um, When it comes to the folks, they, they, I would have to vet them time a thousand. 
And the only kind of folks that I really can work with is the ones that's hated by their own community. I mean, literally hated. They can't like them at all. Now you say, why is that? Because from my experience, the ones that's hated by their community from what I've really seen in my life, those have been more of an ally, the ones that's hated by their own community, like their community can't stand them. They, I mean, they cast out, right? That's the only ones I've seen that's been cool, really cool. The ones that's accepted by their community, I, I can't look at you as an ally because you're going to lean, your, your community is cool with you and you're going to lean that way eventually against me. So my litmus test is you got to be an outcast of your community. Nobody got, can't not want you. And I can easily, I can definitely easily work with you. I'm just keeping, I'm just keeping it 100. Most people won't tell you that, but I'm going to tell you, you got to be an outcast. If you're not an outcast, you say about, about, about the Chinese, you know, and you mentioned the Chinese. Sometimes I had, I've had the Chinese holler at me too. A couple of times. Hey man, you know, we, we, we got this, we got this media apparatus over here and man, we'll work out a deal with you. You can use footage. You can do it. Like I, other people holler at me sometimes. I will say the Chinese have, I'm gonna say that much. Um, some of the companies with the folks here and there, but definitely Chinese, but I haven't done nothing with nobody. I say, eh, you know, I say, Kellen, you talk to them. You see what they want, what they need. We'll look at it. We'll see, we'll see what they are doing. But nothing I've never, no. Cause like I said, I'm very serious about African diaspora. I'm not saying that other people can't come in and help us do a task to do the work of African diaspora, but mm -mm. And even if they do a task, it's business. I'm not bucking my eyes. I'm not showing all my teeth. Cause ain't no man more than me. That's how I look at it. We all the same. The only one more than me is God. <sighs> okay. Y'all with this user here. Okay. Let me, let me go there for a minute. Now, even God himself has a time where he punished people. God doesn't, only one that he really punished to, to infinity is Satan and, and, and his demons. The his, history of God is never to punish people to infinity. He punished them, he judged them, and then even after he judged them, unless he decides to take their life, if he judged them, he still let them repent, come back, and do what's right. Some of y'all are pushing this ideology that we broke the covenant and that's why we this, that's why we did. No, 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 it's not that. It's because we hard headed. We don't want to work with each other as a community. That's what it is. We have too much love. No, this is our problem. We have love for the colonizer. That's what we, that's our problem. If we would treat the colonizer like we treat each other and we treat, and we treat each other like we treat the colonizer, then we'll get somewhere as a community. Oh yeah, we will go high as the mountains. But unfortunately, the only way for us to get together, the colonizer has to take one of our lives in a very horrific way, AKA George Floyd. Notice when we had the video of George Floyd and watched that in real time, black folks stopped fighting real quick with each other. And we all embraced each other from the hood to the boardroom. Nobody was on, I'm better than him, I'm better than her, my fraternity, my sorority, my money, my hood. Nobody cared about that. We just say, hey, we all want people and, and we got to fight because, hey, this is not right. And I've said many times before, why it has to be a blood sacrifice of a black person for us to unify. And then these people know us very well. We'll turn up, we'll cause a couple of billion dollars worth of damage. And then they'll start just, they'll be afraid. They'll start giving a bunch of concessions. They talking about DEI. That's where DEI come from. Those corporations was introducing DEI as some sort of way to give concessions to black people for them to stop doing what, what black folks are doing at that time. Then we, then we, 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 he gets arrested, whatever. He goes to prison, whatever. 
we, we calm down and we go back to partying and BS and being high and all different things that we're doing, arguing about, you know, relationships, arguing about sports, arguing about clothes, arguing about this, that we can't work with each other. All the time we can work with each other when we watch a horrific, horrific death of a black person. God has nothing to do with that. That is us. Don't put everything on God. Don't lie on him. We hard headed, we stubborn and we stiff neck. Our behinds need to work with each other. But you notice people like P Diddy ain't got no problem working with other black people to do dirt. But why can't we work with, with, with each other to, to, you know, like we talk about this all, you know, people talk about this all the time. We got all of these people with all this money in our community and they don't fund anything. They don't say, let me help. You know, other communities, if you want to go there, other communities, their people are expected to fund certain things. See, the only one we had in history that had a kind of like an enforcer wing to make some of that happen was the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad with the FOI back in that, that time period, oh, oh, you, you, you was going to help the community. You, you don't matter what, how much money you had. They were pulling up on you and say, hey, man, um, yeah, you need to go ahead and make a donation, you know, and everything to the nation so we can, so we can help black people. And they wasn't taking no for an answer. And back in that time period, you didn't want to mess with the FOI. Not back then. Or they, they, they had some certified, you know, people with the FOI back then. I'm not saying they ain't certified now, but I'm talking about when Elijah Muhammad was, was, was running the nation. If you had like a Elijah Muhammad today, that would have been great. You know, pull up on LeBron, pull up on Floyd, pull up on all of them and say, Hey, uh, we need this much money. Cause we got to do this. We got to do this for the black community. So you need to go ahead on and, and, and handle that. You know, you make that out, whatever you want to send a, 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 a cashier's check, whatever you think you need to do, but don't let us come back here. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like this, you getting a hundred million dollars, you a billionaire, you can't spend it all. You can buy all the houses you want. You can take so much. And then this is the thing, black millionaires buy homes and they can't sell them. Do you know why they can't sell them homes? Cause a lot of times them people don't want to be in it because, 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 uh, they have a thing about buying black people's house in this country. Even if it's a mansion, they don't even want to buy it. You got to literally move all your pictures. How many times have people have reported this? You got to move all your pictures or have your white friend go in and act like it's hers or his for you to sell your house. So a lot of times these black celebrities are stuck with houses they can't even get rid of. Not because people don't have the money. To, no, these people got money to buy it. They just don't want to buy it because you lived in it. That's how committed they are to racism. Who is this okay person says, where do you find this people? It's not all people like that. What do you, what do you mean by that? Can, could you, um, um, explain yourself and let's, let's read what Julie says here. Europeans is not always colonized because they always come from some tribe very different from each other. But yes, uh, came in like France and British was messy. And now the French is even more Julie, Julie, Julie. Hi, Julie. How you doing? Uh, maybe, maybe you're new here. Okay. I I'm glad you said that, Julie. So basically now you're trying to do a European delineation. Julie, this is the problem, Julie. Um, the majority of the, it wasn't just the British who was participating in colonization. Hope you know that it wasn't just the British that was participating in slavery too. It wasn't just them. The British was just more successful at it than all the rest of you. But all of you, Julie believe in white supremacy. I'm going to give you some, I'm going to give you something about white supremacy right now, Julie, Julie, why do you have no African nations in NATO? We're talking about 2024 now. Why you have not a single African nation in NATO. You don't have a single Caribbean nation in NATO. Why is that Julie? All the members of NATO, are all European 
countries or countries controlled by people of European descent. So Julie, why is that? Why, why isn't people like yourself not calling for black people, Africans to be part of NATO so they can have a military alliance where if somebody messes with an African nation. Now they have some backup because of NATO says, basically you attack one, we all going to come attack you. Why is that Julie? Could you please answer me that question? Since all of you are different, you say all of us are different. We all not the same. Just a question. When some of my distant cousins, Africans go to some of these European nations, Julie, why all of them say they get they, a lot of them are, are treated bad in these countries followed. We've covered stories uh, out of different European nations where, you know, black people, different Africans have been treated, you know, bad. Look at Ukraine. When, when everything jumped off of Ukraine, look at what was done to the Nigerian students or the African students, right? Ukrainians are different. They're not British. And look at how, how the, the, they were, they were left dogs was allowed on the trains, Julie. Go look it up, Julie. Dogs were allowed on the trains and left innocent African students who just tried to get an education, left them there in a war zone. But you say it was just the British? No, Julie, no, it's all of y'all. All of you are collectively responsible for what happened. Now you may have not done anything to anybody, but you are living the benefit off of what your ancestors have collectively done. And you have to have a collective recompense, right? And the collective judgment that comes along with that, because your community did not denounce and did not pay reparations in the form of cash payments to former colonies or make whole the people that were colonized. You say you don't need no reparations. I personally didn't do you anything. So why should I have to pay? Right. But yet I personally wasn't put in slavery, but yet I'm still living the legacy of it. Right. African countries who's very young, actually, they have a lot of those countries not even formed a hundred years. Europeans were, went to the Berlin conference to divide up that land. These are human beings with human rights, Julie carved up that land. Leopold took more lives out of the Congo than Hitler did in Germany in Nazi Germany. And nobody talks about Leopold King Leopold out of Belgium. The pictures are online, Julie, if you want to go see. If you didn't make your rubber quota, he chopping your hands off. Do you know Julie in Belgium? I don't know where you're from, Julie. Maybe, maybe you, are you from Belgium? Do you know they still sell those chocolate hands as delicacies in the um, shops in Belgium, Julie? Do you know that? That is sick. That's very sick, Julie. Then Julie, how come African nations don't have, like you said, no veto power in the UN or anything? African nations were never really wanted on the UN security council at all for a long time. They never had African nations there. Julie, all the people calling the shots were people of European descent, different flavors of European, Julie, not just the British, not just the French. Now, now one of y'all said, Hey, we need an inclusive group. This isn't right. Do you know the only inclusive group, Julie, that I see on the, on the market right now? And y'all kind of mad about that. It's bricks. Bricks literally is an inclusive uh, organization. You got Brazilians in there, but basically, you know, well, it's, the mestizos. And then you also, you have black Brazilian in that country. You got Russia. That's a European descent, right? Russians. You got Indians, you know, East Indians that's considered Asian. Of course, you know, you got uh, China in there, the Chinese, 
You got South Africa in there. They Ethiopia is 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 being being lit in bricks. Another African nation, right? Not recently. I mean, Sister Vicky just reported Russia just asked Nigeria if they wanted to apply to be in bricks. Y'all not asking nobody to be in NATO. That's why they starting to get together and say, man, you know what? We, we all the things, all, the last thing BRICS really got to do, well, I know they're working on the currency. The last thing they got to do is, work, is do a military alliance just like NATO. That's the last thing they got to do. I mean, I mean, Julie, you understand? Maybe you can help me, Julie. Like I say, I, I, I don't mind having a conversation uh, whatsoever about this. But, you know, I mean, you can't bring that where we just different flavors of European and we not all the same. No, y'all on code. Y'all are the only group in the world that has been on code about your survival. And that's why y'all all move the same way. Because you can't just say, oh, it's them Americans. They, they the real racist. Mm, no. Y'all all move the same. Y'all all move the same when it comes to that. You, you, you're threatened by anyone outside of your group. Well, Geo, it, they may bring them in eventually. You talking about North, they may. But, but don't let nobody come up here and talk about, we ain't all the same. We're not them. Like, okay, if you're not the same, well, show me your record. Show me your human rights record. Show me how you defend in Africa. Show me how you defend in the Caribbean. Man, the only, I can say the only politician I've seen, I'm going to give this woman her credit, uh, Claire Daly, that MP over there, uh, what, what country is she from? Is she, is she's from Ireland? I think she's the only white politician that I've seen that calls out the imperial things that they do. The only one. I give that lady a lot of credit for what she do. I have no problem giving nobody credit, but outside of her, and she's very loud and when she calling y'all out, y'all don't like her, not at all. Cause one thing y'all don't like Julie is, is, is y'all mess to be on front street, Julie. Y'all don't like that. Y'all don't want nobody talking about your history. You don't want your fellow Europeans talking about you. Matter of fact, you look at them as a traitor for telling everybody y'all business. Yeah, she's from Ireland. Okay, Ireland. Well, shout out to Clara Daly. She's an MP. Shout out to her. Yeah, be, care be careful, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, trying to call me out because I, I got time. I got nothing but time. But let, let's let's get let's get back here. You know, with with with, the, with this sister, he had to cook a little bit. Now, on the other side of that, she said she moved her kids to Europe. I don't support that. I'd rather find an African nation where I don't see people shucking and jiving than taking my kids to you. Cause let me tell you something. I can deal with my people all day long, even if they wrong, I could deal with them. But I, why, why leave America? I, this, this is my thing. If I'm going to go to Europe, I might want to stay my behind right in America stay my behind in America and find some place in America where I, I can be at peace. I'm not going to leave America and go away to Europe. That's not happening. And bring my kids to Europe. That's not their people. At least in America, I can surround my kids around the black community. I can go to a, a, a city where we at. I can go to, you know, some of them, I can immerse my kids, at least in the community. I'm not going to take my kids from my community and go immerse them in Europe. I'm just not going to do that. Now you say, well, maybe she moved to a black area in one of the countries. You know, like you got black London, you got black this, black that. Okay. Let's say she did that. Let's say she did it, right? Still, why leave America and go over there? If I'm going to leave America, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the motherland. Or if I had to go to the Caribbean or something like that, or, you know, not to say I'm going to go, go there, but let's say if I had went to a place like Costa Rica, well, then I, I need to go to black people at something like that. Like in Latin America, I'm going to go with, with my people at because there's plenty of black people in Latin America, but I'm not going to go move to no Europe. I'm not going to move to no Canada. 
I'm not saying you can't visit, visit, but no, because one thing I can say, not every person in the continent is out there shucking and jiving. I know people personally in the African continent that don't, matter of fact, you couldn't work here with me if you did that. So every person you see that pops up on this platform, you better believe they don't do that. That is like a prerequisite. You can't buck your ass working here. You can't shuck and jive. You can't be thinking these people are high and mighty, not working here. That's because you're going to be just off brand and the audience is going to get you out of here quicker than I get you out of here. Cause I tell everybody, look, I, I do listen when the people say, and if the people just, I mean, they just really don't like you. And I mean, there's nothing I can do to help change that. then you got to move around. So don't come on here saying nothing like you shucking and jiving and all that because they gonna move you around because the way it works here is definitely, you know, it's what I say, but it's also what the people say. And sometimes the people override what I say at times. So every person I deal with over there, you better believe they know. And, and because I found people on the continent that's about the business they not about these, they not shucking and jiving. They not, they not bucking the eyes. They not doing anything like that. If I found those people on the continent, then sister, you could have found them too. And you could have, and, and you could have surrounded yourself. Uh, Tyrell Grant, black people would not be able to free ourselves alone. It would take an outside force to destabilize the West enough for us to have our opportunity. It's just God's cursed on us. And to, no, no, no. Tyrell, if you believe God has cursed you, I don't know what to tell you. I'm not living underneath the, the, the curse of God. I'm living underneath God's blessings. I'm living underneath his blessings. Okay. And my people are living underneath his blessings. We just got to choose to do the right thing. We don't need no outside force for us to do what's right. No. And let's call it what it is. You talking about this destabilization of, of the West in particular America. Most of you, let's call it what it is. You've gotten too dependent on them folks. You, do, you don't know how to operate, a lot of you. That, that's the problem. You really want to know the problem? You, you, no, you're not ready for that. The majority of you are not, not ready. You're not ready to do for yourself. Even, even when you say the term do for self, some of you get mad. Because you're so used to going to them for everything. So no, I, I, I am not a big advocate of destabilization. Because let me tell you something, if you are truly about doing what's right for yourself, then why does it take something? Why, listen, it goes back to the George Floyd thing. Why I gotta take something so extreme for you to do something? Why? Why can't you just make a plan and do it? Why? Why does it take so much extreme? Like, are, you, are, are we that hard headed? We ain't gotta be that doggone hard headed, man. I don't want something extreme. It's kind of like somebody telling you, hey, stop smoking cigarettes. Or you're gonna or you or you're gonna get sick. Well, you don't want to change until you get sick. That's an extreme. Why couldn't you stop when people's telling you behind the stop before it got extreme? Oh, now you're serious about it because now you didn't got sick. Oh, now you you trying to change everything in your life because something extreme had to happen. And that, and that's the tenets of, of, of somebody stubborn and stiff neck. They won't do right unless something major happened to them. And people talking about waiting to the end. Let me tell you something. God wants you to live right good every day. He don't want you to wait until the end. That's, that's, that's on that. I'm on the sweet waiting on the sweet by and by conversation. Look, God wants you to have heaven on earth and heaven in heaven. He don't want you saying, oh boy, I will enjoy the sweet by and by. Well, everybody else enjoying their life? No. You take what God gives you and you multiply it. You multiply it. You remember, you remember that, that parable of the talents? The talents? The one that didn't do nothing at all was the wicked one, 
not the one that say, I'm going to take my thing and I'm going to try to multiply and grow what was given to me. That one was given more. The one that didn't do nothing, theirs was taken away and given that one. And then the one that didn't do nothing, as in a super mayor say, not doing no work, that one was called wicked and cast out. Not the one that was trying to do something. So you, so if you're not trying to do anything and you waiting on a sweet by and by, you going to have a rude awakening according to the scripture. That means you are wicked and you are unfaithful servant because you didn't do nothing with what the Lord gave you. Yeah. Why it's one had one and bared it instead of that one talent could have became millions or billions that one, but you buried it. No, I'm, a, I'm not going to risk Man, look, life is about risk. You're going to win some, you're going to lose some, you're going to have some disappointments. You're going to have all kinds of things happen in life, but that, but, but you learn from those disappointments and failures and then you'll be better. Right? So I just, I'm not for immersing my children outside of the community where, just cause I know better and at least immerse them in, raise them in a community, put them in a community. Even if you, in, if you want to move to the African continent, get them around the right people, the people that talk like you, you know, like they say, find your tribe, find your tribe that talk like you, that think like you and immerse them around them. And then they grow up now when they grow up now in life, you can travel and go whatever country you want to Fine. Hey, it's a lot of countries I want to go visit with my family and see it and enjoy. Right. And then I come my happy self right back to where I'm at, but I'm not about to sit up here and just say, Oh, I'm going to move to London. No, that's just not happening for what? If I don't like being in, in places like Massachusetts, where they, where they don't season the food right, why in the world I'm going to go to, to freaking London and live? No, it's not happening. But hey, it's a lot of black people in London. Shout out to all my distant cousins in London. Y'all, y'all, I love y'all. But I, I, that's just not me. I, I can't do it. Now, Mike C says, you can't have the blessings without having gone through the curses. 16, 19, and 2019. These folks time is up now based off of what Mike here says, if we go off of what, exactly what Mike said, it goes to what I said earlier. No group of people is in a indefinite curse. No group of people is unless, unless you have done so much over hundreds. Now, listen, I would rather be in the 16, 19 to 2019 people than the other side. I would want to be them. I wouldn't want to have to, you know, so, you know, whatever you sow, you reap. I would not want to have to reap slavery. I would not want to have to reap colonization. I wouldn't want to have to reap theft. I wouldn't want to have to reap uh, uh, the assassination of leaders. I would want to ha have to uh, reap the poisoning and experimentation on people. I, I would want to have to reap all the people that have been put on trees. I wouldn't want to have to reap all the mass incarceration that's been done to black people forever. I would want to, I would want to reap that created a law that says it's okay to take the life of a child in the womb just because you're poor and, and push it as that's a way to get, to help you out of poverty is that I would want to be in that group that got to deal we got to deal with the, the harvest of that. I wouldn't. Now queen 700 say we still in captivity. You're not in captivity. We're not in captivity. When we was enslaved, we was in captivity. You have the freedom right now. If you want to get up and leave the United States, you could, nobody's holding you back. No, we're not in captivity. The only captivity we in right now is not unifying and working together like other groups. That's the only captivity I see. We're not in captivity. Now, now, now this government is not holding us back and we want to leave. Now, if we want to leave in mass, I can see them doing something about it or attempting to, but people in captivity are in jail. That's captivity. If you're not in jail, no.
And right, Buck Horse is right. I wasn't born to be nobody's slave, be that I'm not a slave. I know, of course, I, I, my, my ancestors were, and I appreciate everything they did for me and they did for us. I appreciate that because I wouldn't be where I'm at today. You wouldn't be where you're at today. It wouldn't be for them. And we always need to honor our ancestors and then don't be ashamed of them. Don't, don't be ashamed of, of anything that we've been through, currently going through. Don't be ashamed because it's the truth. It's the truth. And, um, I, I saw, I saw, uh, what's the last thing she said? So even many times is Western Europe, they went broke and now the, the most of the country are, they were also became Muslim in less than 40 years. Okay. With Julie, but you know, before I wrap this up, yeah, I believe it. Europe is going to become very, very Muslim and very, um, Africanized and things like that. You know why Julie? Because your people, Europeans, when destabilize the Muslim world. When you drop so many bombs on people and destabilize their country, guess where they're gonna go? You're next door. So they go to so hey, Julie, get ready to start practicing Ramadan. Study it. You gonna be everything gonna be Ramadan. And uh, shout out to all the, the, the Muslims and with Islam and Ramadan. Uh, uh, ho hope y'all fasting for Ramadan. Uh, Europe is gonna see uh, more and more Ramadan. And I'm here for it. I'm cool with Ramadan. I'm cool with Muslims. I'm cool with them. Trust me, I'm good. I don't mind Ramadan. Ramadan is actually something everybody probably should practice, at least for health purposes, if you don't do it for, for Islam. You know, fast and, and clear up some of your health issues. You know, you don't, you know, hey, it's, it's been a scientific proof how fasting has been cure, helping cure certain uh, conditions, repairing cells, and all kind of things. Man, shoot, fast, fast, Julie, fast with the Muslims. Why not? Well, Tyrell talking about the black Jesus by the Russians. We've been saying Jesus is black, so that, I don't get excited by that. We've been saying that. Come on now. Okay, well, you know, I, I don't I don't get into them arguments when people say they Indian. If that's what you are, I I can't doubt it. Um, they were some black people that's part of those tribes, but they were kicked out when it was time to start giving money. And, you know, we talk about reparations. How come nobody's fussing about them get, still getting money? I mean, hadn't it been long enough already they got money? I personally think they need to cut that money off from them. I mean, it's been long enough. Like, like, come on, you know I mean? We, it's, it's time for reparations now. You gonna keep giving them money forever? Like, really? They got their own land, you've been giving them money like for hundreds and hundreds of years, and they still need more money? Like, come on, well, what happened to that? Pull yourself up by your bootstraps and stop being on the government conversation. Why you don't tell that to them? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me, let me, because you're not giving the money to the red Native Americans, you're giving it to the $5 Indians who are all them folks. So that's why. What am I saying? They only giving their own people money as running around putting a feather in their head and talking about them Native American. You know, them Native Americans like Elizabeth Warren. That's their version of Native American, right? Not the red ones. We talking about Elizabeth Warren. That's why they gonna keep giving them money. Cause trust me, if it was really the red Native Americans. They wouldn't be giving them anything. But thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on the uh, stream tonight. Greatly appreciate it. Make sure to click the subscribe button down there. Uh, click it. That way, you know the next time we post. Make sure to click the like button. That's also very, very important. Um, tell your friends and family, and remember tomorrow, Friday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, we'll be doing the live stream on the African Diaspora News Channel app, um, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. May, if you're not a member, become a member there. Uh, you can download it in the Google Play and Apple App Store, and we'll be talking about P. Diddy and going through that lawsuit, and um, because that's very important to talk about in the community. It's a whole lot of things that with that that's been going down and I kind of put some two and two together with some of that too, that some people not saying about even the gentleman that, um, that put, that put out this lawsuit, but thank y'all for listening.